Hello there, my name is Pug, and I'm what you'd call a Pokemon Master. I've played every Pokemon game except Scarlet and Violet, but that's not what we're here for. There are these things called ROM hacks, and they're basically cool Pokemon games created by the fans. There are a lot of these, but today we are here to talk about the first one I ever played, and one of the first to be completed, Pokemon Light Platinum. This ROM hack offers Pokemon up to Generation 5, two new regions, and a whole new story. Now, is this one of the best ROM hacks out there? No, it's frankly one of the oldest at 14 years old and doesn't really stand up to the newer ones. But it's the only one I've played and I hate seeing people hating on it, so I'm here to give it some love. Before the video begins, if you do end up enjoying this video, leave a like. It greatly helps out the channel and lets me know you want more of this content. All right, let's get into it. The game opens up with us meeting the Pokemon Professor. In this game, her name is Jasmine. She does the usual Pokemon speech and shows us a Snivy. Then we get to choose our character. I choose the boy and name myself Levi, after my real name. The first encounter we have is with the legendary Pokemon, Dialga, Palkia, Guarantee, all ganging up on literal god. My character says this is a nightmare, but clearly this nightmare is the best nightmare I've ever had. And we then wake up and meet with our mom, who tells us the professor wants our help reading some ancient language that only I know how to read, so you know, that's kind of convenient. So after we go outside, we meet with some stranger who already has fl the HM Fly, and we learn this guy is Kaori, the champion of this region. He was told to pick us up for the professor, so we get a sick ride on the champion Salamance. When we arrive, we meet up with Ash from the anime, who turns out to be the world champion, which is sick. We then read the transcript for the professor and find out it talks about the creation of the universe and how Arceus is losing his power and it's dangerous for humanity. So the champion doesn't like that and destroys the transcript of Hydro Pump and then covers up his crime of vandalism with Rain Dance. Then he and Ash have important League stuff to deal with, so they leave. Then some crazy dude claiming to be from some organization called Team Steam attacks Professor Jasmine because he wants to steal her research. So instead of battling this crazy guy herself, the professor hires a 10 year old to do it, so we get our starter, which are the Kanto ones. I picked Bulbasaur and absolutely bullied this guy. And after beating the crap out of this thug, he tells us he's going to kidnap the professor and that I'm on Team Steam's hit list. Honestly, his first mistake was telling the person he plans on kidnapping he's going to kidnap her, which is a rookie mistake, honestly. Second, he told the protagonist of a Pokemon game that we were on a hit list, so you know we're going to have to dismantle this team now. We then got to nickname our starter, and I named our Bulbasaur Sprout. We then head out to the professor's lab, and she tells us that now that we got a Pokemon, we got to be the world Pokemon master. Oh, and she casually throws in that we should talk to the Kano's Professor Oak. So we head over to the next town, which has a Safari Zone. I So I catch a Snow Run naming her last, and a Sandile, which I lovingly named Air, who by the way becomes the god of this run. We find Oak at a lake, meeting with some trainer named Gold, who catches a Feebas. Then one of the Feebas attacks Professor Oak, and we have to save him. Sadly, we don't have Pokeballs, or I would have caught it. One of the things I love about this game is how many different trainers from other games they bring to be your rivals, as well as some original characters. You'll see what I mean later. We then tell Professor Oak that Professor Jasmine wants to talk to him, which he says he'll meet up with her. We then head back to Professor Jasmine to meet up with her and Oak. They talk about how they know Arceus created the world and such and how it aligns with Oak's research. Jasmine tells Oak she'll send him the research on a CD Oak tells us to come to his research station at General City's radio station, then leaves. Jasmine casually tells us to, she signed us up for the Pokemon League, so now we gotta do it. And now that gives us the actual plot for being the strongest trainer to defeat Team Steam. She also gives us Pokemon, which would have been a lot helpful earlier. We then meet Oak at his makeshift lab, and he tells us about how he's glad we visited. Something I wish our mother would tell us when we visited her, but she doesn't. He then gives me and Gold a Pokedex as a parting gift. Gold thanks the professor and tells us he's gonna get strong enough to beat us, so I hope him the best of luck. We then continue with our journey, catching a Shinx, which I named Simba. We then run into a trainer named Diamond, one of our rivals for this game. We see a Pichu drowning, we jump in and save the Pichu. We are thanked by it, by it attacking us. We throw a ball at it and catch the Pichu and name it Felro. Diamond introduces himself as a trainer from Sinnoh, telling us he's not a rookie and is challenging us to our first rival battle. He sends out a Pidgey and I send out our snow run last. Pidgey takes two powdered snows but goes down. Next up is a Let Kid and Derek comes out and makes this a Let Kid a Let Dead. Diamond then sends out Charmander and it only goes down to only one cent. Diamond tells us he hopes us the best for us and hopes to battle again someday. 
is then going to challenge the first gym. One of the things you gotta know fairly quickly is that levels shoot up for trainers fairly quickly and wild Pokemon stay absurdly low. Next, we meet a trainer named Red, who apparently talks and already knows us because Jasmine told him about us. He shows us headbutting a tree will sometimes give Pokemon, then leaves. No, we never use this. We then meet a nice lady telling us how she's the first gym leader and that her name is Jessica, and how we can't battle with her until she deals with the angry combi problem in her town. Yeah, remember how I said level spike? Yeah, we encounter a bug catcher with level 14 Pokemon, followed shortly after a battle with Gold, who tells us, as promised, he's here to battle, which I wasn't prepared for at all. On top of that, he has level 16 and 17 Pokemon, while I only have 14. I switched Falro out with Sprout, and after learning Budu is a poison type and can't be poisoned, Sprout takes down Budu. Next is Magby, and I don't switch out, causing Sprout to faint. Luckily, Dare is the MVP, even while poison, and swiftly deals met with Magby with Bite. Next is Totodile, which easily could have taken out Dare, but he decided to scary affairs and rage, causing him to go out in two bite. We get to Inhor City, and like Jessica said, the entire city is under attack by Combi, except the Pokemon Center, which is a sticky situation. They even have trapped people in their home. Jessica tells us once the Combi Hive is dealt with, the gym will be reopened. So after quickly grinding to level 20, we then head into the forest to find out what the hell is going on with the Combis, and find out it's Team Steam again causing trouble. So we quickly deal with all the grunts to help Jessica. We then meet up with Jessica and she tells us that Team Steam is apparently testing their legendary capture invention on the poor Combi, and that's why they were angry and attacking everyone. The crazy lady, or one of the admins of Team Steam named Sheila, tells Jessica she doubts she'll be able to beat her, and after a quick Pokemon battle where Sheila's Drift Blim takes out Jessica's Vespa Queen in one Shadow Ball, Sheila orders Drift Blim to straight up kill Jessica and that's when we have to step in. Sheila starts with a Drifloon, and we start with Laughs, but of course we have the worst luck ever, flinching and paralyzing, but eventually Drifloon goes down. Next is Duskull, so we send out Dare to deal with it by taking it out in a one bite. She sends out Poochiana, so we send out Lass again, and take out the poor dog with an icy wind headbutt combo. Next up is Attempted Murder Drifloon, who takes out Laugh after being paralyzed. Felro comes out doing a bit of damage with two thunder shocks, but goes down to two gusts, with both of them being crit. Dare comes in and finishes what Lass and Felro started. Sheila is literally speechless after this battle, but then ends up talking, telling us she's going to keep returning until she's beaten us. Which, I mean, it's good to have goals, I guess. Jessica returns to her gym, telling us she can't wait to battle us. We go to challenge the gym, but first we have to battle Red again to test us to see if we're prepared for the fight to gym. He leads with Pikachu, and we start with Lass. And just like a phone in winter, Pikachu goes down to two cold winds. Next up is Riolu, and I make the mistake of keeping Lass in thinking Ice is strong against fighting types, but it didn't matter because, like Pikachu, it only took two Icy Winds to take down Riolu. Next up, his final Pokemon is Churchwig, and just like the rest of the team, it goes down in two Icy Winds. Last put in the work. We are now up against the first gym, Jessica, who is a bug type gym leader. She starts with the Scroopy, and I start with Felro, who I try and set up nasty plots on, only for Felro to go down. So I send out Lass, who deals the final blow to Scroopy. Next, she sends in Whirlipede, who takes out Lass. I send in Dare, who takes him out in one bite. Next up is Ariados, who when I use Mud Slap on, and it does nothing. So I take it out with two bites. Her final Pokemon is Vespa Queen, who I get one bite off before Dare goes down. So I send out our final Pokemon, Sprout. I use Leaf Siege and then Razor Leaf on Vespa Queen for the win. Continuing on our way, we ran into two trainers having a Pokemon battle. They introduced themselves as Lunik and Best Girl Salona from the Lauren region, which is the other region in this game. They say they are here to challenge the Zypher League. Lunik challenges us to a battle, and he starts off with Chinchar, and we start with Felro, paralyzing him and then setting him a nasty plot, and then take him out in two Sunder Shocks. Next up is Krogunt, and I switch to Sprout to Leech Seed and Razor Leaf. Gun. Next up is Luxio, which suffers basically the same fate, but we added in a poison powder for good measure. With the battle over, Lunik heads to challenge the Inhor gym, and Salona heads to catch some new Pokemon. On our travels, we caught a Vulpix, which we named Vixen. Heading north, we run into Gold again, who wants a rematch. We make quick work of his team, and he tells us he also needs the first gym badge. That we are then told to pass, we need we need to head back and buy some honey to get past Snorlax. And of course, the lady who sells us is the one who told us that. After we get past Snorlax, we end up getting to the next town, 
we have to battle our new pal Salona, which I wasn't prepared for at all. She sends out Turtwig and I send out Felro. Felro, being already low, dies in one hit. Sprout then puts in the work and takes out Turtwig, Nidoran, fem female, and Baneri. She wishes us well and leaves. After healing, we then run into Diamond. With the help of my Pokemon, we make quick work of his team. Vixen takes out Ghastly. Felro gets taken out by Eevee, but not before putting in some work. Sprout takes out Eevee. Lassen takes gets taken out by Tranquil. Dare takes out Big Bird by getting the taste for blood. We once again make a lead kid, a lead dead with Sprout. We end up talking to a bug catcher and getting a lucky egg. When we arrive in Esmeralda City, the entire thing is on fire because of that crazy team steam. We see two mystery ladies talking about the red and blue orb. We meet up with Ash and Red who tell us they got us hired into team steam and give us a uniform. They then use rain dance to put out the fire while we enter a lab, bully every coworker we come across until we find Sheila with the two crazy ladies named Marina and Tara, who turns out to be two of the leaders of Team Steam. Sheila claims she's gonna jump us, but we once again bully her with Lass doing most of the work putting out her Hauntor and Driftbloom. I then switch into Sprout, who stalls probably with Poison and Leech Seed, once again taking out Sheila. Sheila gets in trouble for playing with us, and then they leave, so I think it's safe to say we got fired for bullying our coworkers. We then meet Esmeralda, who is this gym leader of Esmeralda Town which I just realized their names are super similar. She introduces us to Professor Rowan, who is either this grunt of Team Steam or has mastered invisibility. And I'm not sure which one it was. Esmeralda then heads to her gym. We then get an Eevee egg from this dude before talking to Ash and Red again. Ash has got more business to do and Red is off to look for more adventure. Guess what time it is? Gym leader time! Esmeralda is a grass gym leader. She starts with Ivysaur and I throw Vixen in to make quick work of Ivysaur. Vixen makes quick work of Servine as well, taking out two Flamebirds. Last then takes out Torterra, which has to be hacked in because it is far too underleveled to be a Torterra, in two Ice Fangs. Last then takes out Jumpluff in it with a single Ice Fang. After beating Esmeralda, she gives us Trademark Giga Drain, which I teach to Sprout. We get the Bambotch down and are offered a Larvitar, which we turn down. We are then challenged by Red once again, since we are presumably on the same level. Nope, we are not, because Sprout takes out Pikachu with Poison and Leech Seed, Vixen takes out his Grotto with Flame Burst, and Dare takes out Gyarados with two crunches, but it is incredibly close. Vixen takes out Lucario with two Flame Burst, and after this fight, Dare evolves into Krokorok. Some sailors give us a Water Stone, and then we meet with Steven Stone, the Hoenn champion, who already knows us because Ash told him about us, meaning we are basically famous by this point, and we only have two gym badges. We also meet with Lucas, the gym leader of Seenport City. They offer us a ride and a blimp if we agree to help Team Steam from waking up Groudon and Kyogre. Be this being our chance to get our job back and not passing in an opportunity to fly in a frickin' blimp, we take the offer. The blimp shouldn't even be able to fly because it was landed on a frickin' anchor. Groudon and Kyogre wake up on our way to the thing, and we kick the crap out of all our former co-workers without any issue. We also beat up Sheila again with just Dare because Sheila didn't change her team at all. We then have to battle two of our former bosses trying to get our job back since they think we can't beat them. They start with Typhlosion and Blastoise, and I start with Dare and Vixen. Dare isn't healed up at all. Dare takes out Typhlosion with one dig. Blastoise survives a Giga Drain. They send out Electros. Dare gets taken out because I didn't know Electros had the ability to levitate. Blastoise gets taken out by Sprout's Giga Drain. Vixen and Sprout take out the Slimy Eel with a Flame Burst Giga Drain combo team. We then are too late and we all watch Kyogre and Groudon have a screaming match at each other until Literal God shows up and tells them to go to their timeout cave. We then apparently pass out for three days, find out we didn't get our job back, which is disappointing to say the least. We then find out the Red and Blue Orb also got eaten by the island somehow and Lucas wanted us to meet him in Seaport City's lighthouse. We then make our way to the top of the lighthouse, jumping literally everyone we come across. We then meet with Lucas and he tells us the water strengthens him and can't wait to battle us. So we challenge Lucas to a fight and he starts with an Octillery and we start with Simba, our Shank, who during this gym evolved into a Luxray. Octillery goes down in three sparks. Next up is Tentacruel who goes down in two sparks. Next up is Kingdra, his partner Pokemon, who takes a spark but is paralyzed. So we send out a Sprout, takes it down in two Giga Drains. He then sends out Gyarados who takes goes out with one pedal dance and that is the third gym completed. We then head to a beach and meet with a medium named Thomas. 
talking to some ghost. He says he can't wait to, for us to get to Dark Dust City to challenge him. So it turns out he's the gym leader. On our way to Dark Dust, we meet up with Gold, who wants to show us the true meaning of power. So we show him the true meaning of power by taking out Rosilio with two bites, Magmar with Dig, and Crocker Rock with a single spark. Breloom survives a bite, survives a tackle, nearly takes out Simba, so we switch into Vixen, who gets taken out with a crit headbutt, and there he comes out and takes him down with a single crunch. We get to Darda City and challenge the gym. After beating everyone up and figuring out the puzzle, which I had to cheat to get through, battle Thomas the Medium. Drifla, Miss Magius, Dustnor, and his partner Pokemon Gengar all go out in one crunch from Dare, who absolutely sweeps this gym, proving that Dare is once again our MVP. We head up to a tower and end up meeting the champion of Kanto and Johto, Lance the Dragon Master. He is here because Team Steam is trying to steal a relic to learn about legendary Pokemon. He asks for our help to stop Team Steam, and we just want our job back, so of course we agree. Once again, jumping every coworker we come across until we get to the top of the tower where we end up running into Sheila, who says we are becoming an obstacle and says things are different and that she'll beat us this time. Except this time she only has a single drift limb for some reason, and it goes down in a single Thunderfang from Simba. We end up getting to the top of the tower, and Lance tells us one of the leaders summoned Lugia and is trying to capture it, which I mean I guess is a bad thing, we, so we have to stop him. We meet Caitlyn, the third leader of Team Steam, and she threatens to beat us to a pulp. So Team Steam is apparently a council of leaders. Caitlyn then challenges us to a fight. Caitlyn starts with Bronzong, so I set up a Growth and Leech Seed. I set up a second Growth and take it out with a Giga Drain Leech Seed combo. Next up is Umbreon, which goes out to two Giga Drains and a Petal Dance. She then sends in Drapion, so I send in Vixen and take it down by incinerating it. Caitlyn claims her Pokemon are too weak to catch Lugia now, and we watch Ho-Oh show up Kool-Aid Man style. Lugia ends up having a fight with the Rainbow Chicken until God shows up and sends them both home because they were being very, very naughty. Caitlyn claims God's power is amazing, and then her and Team Steam leave before I can ask for my job back, which is utterly disappointing. Lance tells us about how cool legendary Pokemon are and how he's going after Team Steam, but offers to take us to the Pokemon Center first, which was extremely kind of him. On our way, we see Lance flying a plane with his Dragonite. We enter Dardust Forest and we run into Best Girl Salona, who challenges us to a trainer battle. She had a Grottle, which goes down to two crunches. Next is Maynetric, who has to do a single dig. Next up is Miltank, who takes down MVP Dare, but not before getting in some good damage. Vixen comes in and takes out Miltank with the flamethrower and burn damage. It's kinda weird she removed most of her Pokemon though? Which I mean, I guess she's starting a new trend. They're evolved into Crocodile, and a weird bug happened where he was level 40 when he evolved, but he went down to level 35, which was definitely strange. We end up talking a bag on from not jumping off a bridge and killing itself for red. And then we have a battle with him. He also removed a majority of his Pokemon, so he only has two Pokemon as well, which both go down to Dare. So I guess they're starting a trend, no more than three Pokemon. We'll see how it catches on. Get to Emery Town and talk to a red-haired man who turns out to be a gym leader in the Lauren region. He gives us HM Lava Surf, which is a new HM in this game. And then run into Gold, who also removed Pokemon from his team. Starting with Mag Mortar, but it doesn't stand up to Dig from Dare. Next up is Lyron and Typhlosion, who both go down to digs as well. While traveling through the cave, which I'm certain is a volcano, because there was lava at the start of it, we run into a man named Zero, who talks about how the world is cruel, and how the only way to achieve peace is to destroy everything or bully literally everyone. He asks us which, if we agree, and I say no. He tells me we should have both achieve our goals. We then run into Diamond, who also removed Pokemon from his team, so it must be a new trend that Salona started. He starts with Pupitar, which gets taken out by a sing by Dig. Samurai gets taken out by two Thunder Fangs. Electkid evolved into Electivire, but it also goes down to a single Dig, proving Dare is really our MVP. Diamond makes some excuse about having to get the fifth gym badge before running off crying. After exiting the cave into a desert, we end up catching a trap pinch, which we named Jaws. We then run into Professor Jasmine, who calls us her friend and future Pokemon master, which I mean, slow down, Jasmine. Buy me dinner first. After she finishes flirting with us, she tells us she's here to collect the second scripture of a set of three. I don't know why she needs the second one after the champion destroyed the first one with vandalism and hid the evidence in front of us. She claims if all three are put together, she could figure out the creation of the universe. Just a reminder, we destroyed the first one, so it's gonna be forever a mystery we'll never solve. She ends up taking the second tablet to her lab in Yellowtown, 
by flying on a Flygon she owns, which shows she really didn't need our help to take down that level 2 Poochiana at the start of the game. Arriving Gromnet Town because there is nothing going on, so we go to challenge the gym, but a miner tells us we can't because he's not here, he's at the mine. We are offered a museum ticket as compensation, so we head to the museum only to find out our employer is there. Still salty about losing my job, I beat the crap out of literally everyone. We run into Sheila, who added one new Pokemon to her team, but still has the other two removed. Drifslim gets one hit, her new Pokemon Braviary, which doesn't get one hit, but still goes down to two Thunderfangs. We then meet a new admin named Shirley, who is just as upset at us as Shirley, even though we've never met her before. She tries to beat us up, and she puts more of a fight than Sheila did, but like Sheila, ends up losing. Umbreon goes down to Simba. She sends out Espeon, which dares straight up punches in the face, knocking it out. After beating up these two admins, we hear some Team Steam dude talking about finding the black and white stone in the desert. He then tries to leave, Straight up calls us a maggot because we got fired and pushes us to the side and they all leave. He's definitely the smartest person in this organization. He used his adult body to push a 10 year old out of his way instead of fighting us with Pokemon. After this we go to Gromnet Mine, jumping all the miners in this mine until we find a gym leader. He tells us to get out of the way, covers us with his body, and uses actual explosives to uncover fossils. He introduces himself as Atlas the Ground Gym Leader and tells us to challenge his gym. So that's exactly what we do. He starts with a camera up, we start with Sprout. Luckily, it goes down with two outrages. Next up is Claydol, which goes down to one foul play from Dare. Next up is Excadrill, who takes out Dare with a single earthquake. Sprout avenges Dare with two petal dance, as next up is Rampardos, his partner Pokemon. Luckily, even while well confused, Rampardos goes down to one Giga Drain. Next up is Crocodile, which I keep Sprout in, which ends up causing Sprout to get taken down because of confusion. I realize my answer for this gym is gone, and I pray Vixen can handle Crocodile. With the help of Crocodile using Scary Face and Vixen using Confused Rain and Flamethrower, Vixen manages to take down the majority of Crocodile's HP. I then send out Simba, who uses Tackle before getting taken, going down to a crit crunch. I then send in Navy, or Vaporeon, who hatched from that Eevee egg we were given earlier, who thankfully takes a crunch and takes out Crooked Isle with a Water Pulse. This was definitely the hardest battle we've done so far, mostly because of dumb mistakes I made. Oh, and trust me, it gets harder. While traveling through a cave, we witness Terra, one of our former bosses, get arrested by Steven and the police. Steven tells us how excited he was that he nearly forgot to give us the HM Surf, which I teach to Navy. We end up meeting with Red, who challenges us to a battle. Having no more than three Pokemon must still be the popular trend because he only has three Pokemon still. Shelgon goes down to one foul play from Dare. Scyther suffers the same fate. Lucario goes down to a single dig. On our travels, Jaw or Trap Pinch evolves into a Vibrava. Next, we meet up with our good buddy Ludnik, who asks if we are ready to battle. I say yes, even though I forgot to heal up. His Infernape takes out Simba, one close combat, so I send out Sprout, who takes Infernape out in two outrages. Gabite goes down in a single outrage as well. Sprout is confused, but is forced out by Rar into, from a Luxray into Navy, who, even though is also confused, gets two Ice Beams off for chip damage before going down to a Thunderfang. Sprout takes out Luxray with a Giga Drain. After defeating Lucknick, who says he'll beat the Zypher League, he'll be heading for the World Championship. When we arrive in Serenity City, we witness a standoff between the cops and Team Steam. Team Steam just claims that they're off to save the world and leave. The cops give straight up give up, saying the Pokemon Society will stop them. We break into someone's house, and as a reward, they gives us the HM Fly, which we teach to Jaws. We then head to the power plant, which everyone in the town seems to be talking about. We beat up every single employee who gets in our way, watch a dude fix the power. He introduces himself as Rainer, the gym leader of this town, and says now that he fixed the power, he'll be returning to his gym. So we do what any rational person would do after meeting a celebrity, go to their place of work and beat the crap out of them. He leads with Ampharos, we lead with Dare, and take it out in a single dig. But spoiler alert, the rest of his team goes out with a single dig as well. Dare proving to once again our MVP. Rainer is so impressed with our celebrity beating skills, he gives us the a gym badge and trademark Thunderbolt. While grinding to level 50 in a cave, heading to the next city, we end up stumbling upon a Team Steam operation. So we just start jumping all the grunts until we run into a lady who's been waiting for us. 
She knew we'd be coming and needs our help stopping Kratos, one of the leaders of Team Steam, which makes our current team leader count four. Her name is Cynthia and she's the champion of Sinnoh. We then jump every grunt until we find Cynthia holding off Shirley and then we have to fight. Kratos straight up calls us pathetic, then says he's gonna beat us up. Still fuming about being fired, which was a while back now, we kick their butt. They start with Houndoom, we start with Navy. Houndoom goes down to two water pulses. Next up is Umbreon, goes down to a Surf, Last Resort, and Ice Beam. Next up is Flygon, which goes down to a single Ice Beam. Finally is Salamance, which goes down to an Ice Beam. After kicking Kratos' butt, we watch Rishiram and Zekrom fight. Then God shows up doing a dance, and then the legendaries all run away. Kratos watches and says his plan will work, and starts laughing like a freaking insane person. And then Team Steam retreat. Cynthia tells us we did well, and we should achieve our dream, and that the Pokemon Society will deal with Team Steam. On our way to the next city, we run into Gold, who wants a battle, and is still following the no more than three Pokemon trend, and Meg Mortar goes down to a single third. Next is Agron, so we send out Dare, and it goes down to a single dig. Finally is Typhlosion, which also goes down to dig. He tells us our mom would be proud of us, and the next time we meet, he will beat us. And I wish our mom would tell us she's proud of us. Traversing the frozen forest, we run into Diamond, who's been hiding behind a tree waiting for us. He is still also following the No More Than 3 Pokemon trend, but he's now made it to Pokemon. Tyranitar goes down to one dig, and next up is Ele Electivire, who survives a dig because of paralysis, and then goes down to a single foul play. We are then told we are the best battler Diamond knows, and that he is on his way. While trying to enter up the Pokemon Center, we run into best girl Salona, who tells us the gym leader is back in Mount Icethorn, so backtracking we go. But first we head up to the next route, and talk to best girl Salona, who apparently wants to do contests instead of being a trainer anymore, and the only reason she became a trainer was because she was je jealous of Lennox. She then wants one final battle with us. She's also following the new trend that Diamond started of only having two Pokemon in your party. She leaves with Torterra, who goes down with a single foul play. Next is Blastoise, which gets taken down to two Giga Drains. She thanks us for the battle, and then heads inside, and we follow her talking to someone getting died. I'll be honest, on my way to Mount Ice Storm, I was a little sad in Blanda's news. She didn't want to be our rival, and wanted to do beauty contests. This was our final battle with her. She was my favorite rival in this game, but if it made her happy, I was proud of her. We end up finding the gym leader at the entrance of Mount Ice Storm. The gym leader introduces herself as Sophia and says that she'll be heading back to the gym now, but she lied. I checked. So I head back to Mount Ice Storm, find her again, find out she's laughing, and she says she'll head back to the gym now, which was true this time. When we head to the gym, we run into Red, who like everyone else, has three poke has no more than three Pokemon. He leaves with Salamence and I led with Vixen, so I switch into Navy and take it out with a single Ice Beam. He switches to Lucario, so I switch out to Jaws and take it with a Crunch and Earthquake combo. We talk to Sophia and begin our gym battle for our seventh gym badge. Sophia leads the with Snow Runt and I lead with Simba and take it out with two Thunder Fangs. Next up is Lapras and just like Snow Runt goes out in two Thunder Fangs. Her third Pokemon is Walrein, which goes out to a single Thunder Fang. Her fourth Pokemon is Obama Snow, which goes out to two Flamethrowers from Vixen. Her final Pokemon is her partner Pokemon Frost Blast, and it goes down to a single Flamethrower. And with that, we get our seventh Gym Badge. Time for more plot before we finish the game. While traveling to the next route, we run into Kaori and find out the Pokemon Society finally learned where Team Steam's base was to an hint of their real plan. All they know is there's after something in Drake Breath City and their space is just south of our current location. Ash told them we have a uniform and our former member, he's hoping we can use our elite membership to get in and find out what they're planning. We need to hurry because we are running out of time. So we are at the end game of Pokemon. We find Team Seems base which isn't all that hidden and I'm ashamed Pokemon Society didn't find it sooner. We find Kratos and Percy giving a speech about how today is the best day because in a few hours they'll have enough power to force the world into peace. They need to execute Plan Alpha, knowing this could be our last chance to get our job back. To prove our worth, we jump every Team Steam member we come across until we get to Percy and Kratos. But first we need to beat Shirley and Sheila, who both only have one Pokemon now. 
Shirley Yank has an Absol, which Dare easily deals with. Sheila then has a Drift Loom, which Dare simply foul plays and it goes down. We overhear Percy and Kratos plan to clone Arceus and rule the entire region with fear. We can kindly get out of their way as they leave for Drake Breath. And we find that third tablet Professor Jasmine was looking for, so before we save the world, we go visit her in Yellowtown. Now that Professor Jasmine has all the tablets, she can read us a story about the universe. The story starts at the dawn of time before cre the creation of the universe. In the Alpha Dimension, an egg hatched giving birth to the strongest Pokemon in existence, Arceus. It was so powerful, but it was also incredibly lonely. So it created another reality and a Pokemon to control it. This was Garatina. But Arceus created an even more legendary Pokemon. It created Dialga and Palkia. They were given the power of time and space. These two became God's guardian. Still, Arceus created more legendaries. He then created the land, the sea, the sky, and with Pokemon to control it. Arceus, still feeling spicy, created two more guardians these being Ho-Oh and Lugia. He then created the concept of life and death and gave two Pokemon to control it. Not wanting to do any more work, he created Mew to create all other Pokemon. But Team Steam disrupted the balance of the Alpha Universe, causing fighting between the Legendary, causing Arceus to have to step in. Arceus is now weakened from stopping so many battles. Now Team Steam is going to try and catch Arceus and Garatina is going to steal the throne of God. And we already know, Team Steam is trying to clone Arceus. We head to Drake Breath City, head into the cave, find Percy, who calls us predictable, and says they were studying us, but still don't know anything about us. He says he's going to catch Arceus, but first he's going to fight us. He only has two Pokemon, Trianatar, which goes down to a dig like all other Trianatars, and Garchomp, which goes down to a single Ice Beam. We meet up with Kaori, Ash, and the gym leader Wellesley, Turns out, we are the last hope of this region. We then watch Palkia, Dialga, and Giratina gang up on Arceus. Percy then tries to catch Arceus, and we have to see the fight. Garchomp has more than 10 moves, so he's cheating, nearly gets defeated. Percy does catch Arceus, but then with the power of cheat codes, Arceus breaks out of his Pokeball. Dialga and Palkia do the smart thing and flee. Everyone but me and that guy, Zero, Flee. Zero tries to catch Giratina and we end up getting banned to hell. We run into Zero who says the only way to escape is to find Giratina and then has a short panic attack because Giratina is impossible to find. He then realizes that the only thing in his way is us, so he challenges us to a fight. He has three Pokemon, all Dragon types. First up is Salamence which goes down to Foul Place. Second is Garchomp. Then we send in Navy who ends up going down because of mistakes I made. So I send in Jaws, the Flygon, who takes Garchomp down with a Dragon Claw Earthquake combo. His final Pokemon is Hydreigon, who goes down to two Dragon Claws. He then flees, and we go through a portal and find Giratina, but not Zero. So I don't know where he went. We battle Giratina, weaken it with two Ice Beams, then catch it with Ultra Balls. I was worried about this fight because I forgot to save, but it was a fairly easy catch. I named Giratina Paul. Paul then helps us escape the Distortion World, abandoning our boss Zero in hell for all of eternity. We run into Kaori, who tells us he's glad we escaped because him and the professor were going crazy trying to get us out. So I guess our mom doesn't love us because she didn't care. Wellesley headed back to his gym and is waiting for us to challenge him. So I have no idea how he knew we were gonna get out of hell. Turns out after Zero and I got sent to hell, the two other leaders of Team Steam took advantage of this distraction and escaped. God used teleport and fled. Now that we saved the world and caught Paul the Garatina, we now have to challenge the Ace Gym. We challenge Wellesley and he opens up with Kingdra. We start with Jaws. Jaws does some crit damage before going down to a crit Dragon Ball. Sprout takes out Kingdra with a Giga Drain and Sprout takes out Dragonite with two Outrages. Next is Flygon and Sprout does some shit damage before I switch to Dare and she takes out Flygon. We send in Navy who takes out Garchomp with a single Ice Beam. Haxorus comes out and two Ice Beams take down the Dragon. And that concludes our battle with the 8th Gym Leader and now it's time for the League. We visit the mall to prepare for the League. Red gives us the HM Waterfall. We get to Victory Road but before we can go, Slona wants us to go back to her house and fight Lennox one last time. This fight doesn't take long because he has an Infernape that goes down with one Earthquake from Jaws. 
Garchomp takes chip damage from Sprout before being finished by Dare. While traveling through Victory Road, we collect the Firestone, which we will use on Vixen later. We are then challenged by Gold for one last fight. He also doesn't take long, but it's, as his Typhlosion takes out Sprout, but then goes down to one Earthquake from Dare, Agron also goes down to an Earthquake. Once we arrive at the entrance, we have one more fight with Red. He also has two Pokemon, so everyone is just using the two Pokemon trend now. His Charizard goes down to Jaws by crunching and clawing it. Lucaria goes down to a single Earthquake. Before we have our final battle with Diamond and challenge the League, I evolve Vixen into a Ninetales. We then have our final battle with Diamond, and just like all our other rivals, he took the two Pokemon trends seriously. He leaves with Samurott, which who's taken down by Jaws, and then his Metagross suffers the same fate from two Earthquake. Now it's time for the Elite Four, and I was vastly underleveled for this. First Elite Four member is Aisley, the ground type member. She leaves with Steelix, and I lead with Jaws. Jaws does two Earthquakes before going down. Dare then comes out and scares Steelix into switching into Torterra. Dare takes out Torterra with a foul play. She switches to Clay Doll, who gets taken out by Flower Play as well. Hippodon goes down to two surfs from Navy. Crocodile takes out Navy. Sprout also gets taken out by Crocodile as well. Dare takes out Crocodile with two foul plays, and Dare takes out Steelix, proving that she is the MVP. Second is Triton, the Water Elite Four member. He leads with Blastoise, and I once again lead with Jaws. I switch to Simba. And Blastoise sets up a Rain Dance, so now that Thunder is 100%, I use it. It doesn't one-shot. I go for Thunder Fang as well, and he goes for a Full Restore. Simba then takes out Blastoise with a Thunder. He goes for Gyarados, and Simba takes it out with a single Thunder. Next, he sends out Tentacool, who goes down to a single Spark. Next up is Samurott, who takes a Spark, then takes down Sim Simba, and then Sprout comes out, taking it out with Giga Drain. Next is Waylord, who comes out, and even though Waylord is chunky, Sprout does some chip damage, but ends up going down. So Dare comes out and takes out Waylord. The third member of the Elite Four is Lucia, the Dark Lord. So we battle her because I need to become champion. Her first Pokemon is Houndoom, who goes to a single Earthquake from Jaws. Next up is Honchkrow. So I send out Simba, and even when she wastes a full restore, Honchkrow goes down to Sparks. Next up is Umbreon, so I send out Vixen. Vixen was kind of feeling spicy and decided to absolutely char Umbreon. Next is Scrafty, so I send out Dare, who takes out Scrafty with next to no problems. Next up is Absol, who I send out Vixen, and just like Umbreon, gets absolutely charred. The final Elite Four member was Elizabeth, the Iron Queen. She leads with Empoleon, we once again lead with Jaws, who takes out Empoleon with two Earthquakes. Next up is Skarmory, so we send out Vixen and decide Roasted Bird sounds great, so we cook the Iron Bird. Next up is Bronzon, so we send in Dare, who takes it out with a single Foul Play. Next up is Metagross, who goes down to two Foul Plays. Next is Eggron, who Dare takes out with a single Earthquake. And with that, we move on to the Champion. Now, the champion is Kaori, and he has fully level 70 team, nearly level 80, and I had level 50 at this chance. And since grinding was such a pain, this guy took me like five attempts, and I was forced to use items in this battle, which was fine, because even though I was trying to do a no item challenge by this point, I was pretty sure I used battles at the start of the run, and I don't know if I did, but it didn't really matter. Kaori's two hardest Pokemon were his Garchomp and his Haxorus, and those two ended my runs the most. Not to mention that his entire team two shots every member of mine, even if, it, if it's not super effective. So how did I beat him? Well, let's get to that run. He opens up with Charizard, and I lead with Simba. I use Thunder, and we both miss. He misses a Fire Blast, and I hit my Thunder nearly one-shotting it. He uses a Full Restore, and I use Thunder again. He then switches to Garchomp, which actually scares me. And I go for Crunch to bait the dig. I switch to Jaws because Levitate. Jaws goes down to a single Dragon Claw, and I switch to Sprout to get at least one Outrage. Luckily, he misses his first Dragon Rush, but hits the second one and causing Sprout to flinch. Sprout goes down, Navy comes out, luckily he misses a Dragon Rush again, and his Garchomp goes down to an Ice Beam. 
Next up is Lucario, who Dare takes out to with an Earthquake. He sends in Charizard, and even after using a full restore, Dare takes it out with two Foul Plays. Next is Salamence, who Dare also takes out with Foul Plays. Next is Haxorus, so I switch to Navy to Ice Beam, but Navy goes down to an Outrage. And Dare meets the same fate. So I send in Vixen, use a Max Revive on Dare, Vixen goes down to one Outrage, and so I send in Simba, and use a Max Revive on Navy. Now th this Haxorus can one-shot every single member of my team with Outrage. My only hope was to let him kill Simba, and then send in Navy. Luckily, Haxorus hit himself in confusion, and then happened to go down with a single Ice Beam from Navy. Dare takes out Ramporados with Earthquake, and we beat the champion Kaori. Mostly thanks to Dare and Navy carrying this fight. Our mom and Jasmine show up, and they tell us they are proud of us, so we finally got our mother's approval. We then become the champion of Zephyr, and our mom tells us to meet us with Professor Jasmine, and she tells us to challenge the Lauren Reek and the World Championship. But that is post-game content, and we will not be getting into that today. Now that we beat the game, how does the game hold up compared to newer ROM hacks? Well, not very old. As I said at the beginning of the video, it's 14 years old, and frankly, a lot of the hate it deserves is well-deserved nowadays. But it holds a special place in my heart, and I would highly recommend this game if you don't mind the bad writing and don't mind about grinding. It's a good game, but there are many, many better ROM hacks nowadays. I think if you want an older ROM hack, this is a good one to go to. It was one of the first ROM hacks to be completed, like fully with post game and all that, but it really doesn't hold up. Now I know I covered the main story, but if you want me to cover the post game, I would gladly do that. Just leave a like on this video if you want to see the post game. And until then, I'll see you next time.